It's that time again. It is Q&A day. I'm so excited. I've gone through, I've looked at the questions you've been asking, and you know what? They're brilliant questions. I can't believe I didn't cover that material when I shot the videos for you. So I've got some new videos being produced based on your popular requests, and today I've got answers coming your way. Okay, we're back with more real estate questions. Man, I cannot believe how many questions you guys come up with. This is seriously awesome. Like I'm thinking, hey, these videos, we're covering it all. Eh, not exactly, because you've got fantastic questions. And the first one today comes from Ivmid, who says, I really love your real estate videos. I want to get started and I want to know how much money should I set aside to start investing in real estate and getting the education that I need for me and my kids. Ivmid, thank you so much for this really great and thoughtful question. So how much money do you really need? First of all, you need money for a team or for the training. And then it's good to have money to do deals, which remember is optional because so many of these videos are how do you do real estate without needing money. And so if there's something that you need to put money into is you need to invest in the most important real estate that exists. It's the real estate between your two ears. This stuff right here, the smarter you are here, the more successful you're going to be, the more you're going to know, the more you're going to be able to do. You know, knowledge is power. And yet, being able to take action on knowledge is even more powerful. So it's got to start with knowledge and then taking action so that you're not just doing anything on blind faith. Um, the question was asked, how much money should you set aside? You know, um, when you take a look at different companies out there that provide training and education or deals or a team, you know, it's very common for people to pay ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to get the equivalent of the education that you would get in college. And so the people that will invest in college for a brighter future, that's what they're doing when they come in these real estate groups. You know, there's a link below to my book and I've given that away for free to you as a gift. You can download that book, you can listen to the audio of that book. And the reason why I'm giving that to you is because that's your first bit of education and training. But when you're ready beyond that to take a very serious step, a let's make money step, that's where I would submit the form below and that's where you're going to get more synced up help on what that looks like on my end. The most important thing is to find a mentor that you resonate with, uh, someone that you trust, um, and, and someone I would say look for a mentor that has a track record, someone that is very knowledgeable because you know sometimes you have access to people like this in your backyard, people that have been doing a lot of deals. Those were what some of my first mentors looked like. I, I grew my company to a national scale because people everywhere started asking me questions and because I was doing deals everywhere that I went in the nation's best markets. So I'm also one of those options that's available to you and you can request your information and learn more about that. But get the book and start there. I think it's got some fantastic information here. Uh, the other thing is you can get information about it, meeting me and attending my three-day wealth event or my three-day mindset event. The mindset event is a mind-blowing experience and for my fans that are subscribed here on the YouTube channel, we give you special rates and deals on getting out to our event. Uh, we call it Limitless and it's really helping you understand that money and credit can really get in your way. The 100 homes I'm buying this year, I'm not using any money and I'm not using any credit but I am successfully investing in real estate. And that's the number one thing that I want to teach my students. So it's important to have some money set aside for that knowledge and then whether you're using your money to to do deals or someone else's money, either way you're getting vested in real estate. Great question, Ivan, thank you. Jonathan Gilliam, what's a good FICO score to begin with? Okay, for those of you who don't know, a FICO score is your credit score, awesome. I've been working on building my credit after three years, I've managed to get a FICO of 658 and, a, and 700 at TransUnion. I recall a video you posted about how you waited until your credit score was matured. How much has it matured? This is a good question. You got three scores. You got a low score, a medium score, and a high score. So with a high of 700 and a low of 658, often in real estate, there are banks that'll transact with you starting in like the 620s. A lot of the really popular banks get going at 680. So one of the things that I'm wondering here is what's your middle score? If your high is seven and your low is 658, you could have a, you could have a middle score of 690 or a 698 or it could be 662. We don't know what that is, but when you know what that third score is, it's the middle one that most banks will go with. And so in real estate, um, once you get over 700, like 720, you're considered grade A paper. That means that you've got a, a credit score that the banks really uh, put a lot of value and in stock into. 680, totally good and doable. Less than that, 
you start really reducing your options. 680 is really a starting point, but there are banks today at 620 that will do loans. Their interest is going to be higher because it's a slightly higher risk to them, but they exist. So to me, it looks like you're in a position to get going. Your credit has matured. All right, Mark Tenzillo. Regarding the sandwich lease video, it's always good, by the way, when you submit your questions, when you let me know which of the 150 or whatever videos you're referencing. This is good. I'm worried about having to go back to the seller and get something signed or title issue that may keep you from being able to sell the subtenant buyer. Okay, Mark, great question. You gotta remember that you gotta have that deal worked out before you go into the deal, not after you've gone into the deal. So the paperwork that I already have the seller signed to me gives me the full rights to live in it, lease it or sublease it and sell it. And we've already deci decided on a price or we said we'll let an appraisal determine the price. So all that's gotta be in your contracts up front when you're going into a deal. Fantastic question. Okay, DSMAC1111, again regarding the sandwich lease video. What if the owner finds out what you're doing and you'll be in trouble? He expected me to live there and now someone else does. I'm confused, please explain. DSMAC, okay. Great question. Whenever I'm going to sublease, I need that to be contractually there and I need to let the person know. I'm not trying to pull a fast one over them. I'm letting them know. Um, I, if you're not planning on living them there, then let them know. I, I want to go in this contract. I want to own this real estate. I want to manage it and I want to get it sold for you. I'm doing that through lease option and I'm going to have other people living there. Or it's, I might live there, but I want the ability to move out and let someone else live there. Either way, I'm the one responsible for the payment. They do need to know that up front. Great question. Okay, this one comes from Paulo. Please do a video on the terms of the debt you acquire, time and interest rate. You know, Paulo, this is a really good question. Nate, let's do a video on the terms. Like, let's come up with the top 50 real estate terminology and then we'll sing a cool song to it and like do, move the bouncing bubble and we'll teach you all these really cool lingo. But if you watch these videos, I'm hoping that you're picking it up too. Great one. Okay, Ishmael1, hello, I want to buy a cheap duplex with cash to rent it out. It's in a troubled area, I want to rent it for cheap and try to get some cash flow. Do you think it's worth it with the property management? Thanks. Okay, Paulo, this is, uh, this is Ishmael, this is a really great question. When you say that you want to get a cheap duplex in a cheap area, that really kind of makes me a little bit nervous because I want to understand what you're really communicating. Cheap is not always better, cheap is less expensive. Those are two very different things. What I like better than cheap is getting a discount. If I'm in a, part, if I'm in a, a bad part of town where I can get a duplex for $80,000 and I'm thinking I'm gonna get some great cash flow on this, the only problem with the duplex is that it's a fairly elastic market. Um, duplex usually screams investors want it and so there's usually not a big equity play on that. And remember, when you're using a 30-year mortgage, which is the most typical thing people do on holding real estate, the first 10 years that you own that, you're gonna pay off 10, 15, 20% of that house, which means it's all going to interest in the beginning. There's risk with buying something at market and waiting 10 years to get ahead, and you certainly can't count on appreciation because that's very risky. So your idea is good to get the property, and if you can get a good price duplex that has equity into it and rent it out for cash flow, I think this is really great. I would do a little bit of research on are, am I in the slummy part of town? That's my one worry. Or am I in a reasonable part of town? Okay, this next one comes from CNAT01. Hey, Chris, love your videos. You guys are so kind. All you loving on my videos. That's very kind of you. Um, please make a video about how you found your first mentor and what did that person require of you in your first deal with the mentor? I'm going to tell you right now. Here's the video. I made it just for you. When... Uh, my wife and I got married. I quickly found out that what I wanted to do with my life was not going to work. I wanted to be a doctor. I could not get a decent grade in chemistry. And 10 years of chemistry when failing the first class is not a really good thing. So um, I felt really lost in my life. And uh, my wife and I in our church group, we were invited to attend this community training. It was once a week and it was called a marriage enhancement class. They were going to cover a variety of topics of how to have a functional, married, happy, fun family life. And on the fifth week, they covered budgeting. There was a guest speaker. There was something really weird about this guy. Something intriguing, something exciting. He spoke about money as if he didn't have a care in the world. And it was the spirit of abundance that I had not yet even known the word for what it was. But it's what I was experiencing. After he was done speaking and the evening ended, I went up to him and I said, 
what do you do for work? And he looked at me weird and he admitted that he hadn't worked for 10 years. He's been traveling the world. Well, this man made millions of dollars in real estate investing. And that's when I caught the bug. I wanted him to be my mentor. He would not let me be his mentor. Uh, I even found out where he lived. I knocked on his door late at night. This guy, uh, he really wouldn't budge. He wasn't really the one that was called. But the second man that I met was. Uh, this was a man that worked at my company. I thought, if you're so successful in real estate, why are you here? And that's when I learned that he had a team. And he did things that took very little time. And he made a lot of money. He had made over $10 million, bankrupt, lost it all, and done it all over again. So what I liked about learning from him was... Uh, that he had a track record for building, and he also had a track record for making bad mistakes or having something go wrong. I learned valuably from both of them. Um, as my first mentor, I sat down and asked him, what should I do? And he looked at my situation, and for me being really young, 22 years old, he said, Chris, what you need to do is you need to stay with your job for two years, you're one year in. Do another year in the same industry or the same job. Number two is you gotta build up your credit and you gotta let it mature, because you only have one line of credit and the banks are gonna want two. Get three, he said. Um, and then the third thing was um, to put 5000 in the bank. And I looked at him like, man, did money grow on trees? I had a pretty negative financial mindset at that point. But all that changed with his mentorship and the mentorship of others. And within 14 months, I had saved up five grand. I had built my credit. I had two-year job history. And with that little $5,000, I bought my first house. It was only a little bit of advice he gave me, but it was all I needed to take my first really big step into the big, huge, wide world of investing. So, precious memories there. Thank you. Okay, a couple more. Jack Crute. Great videos. Can you tell us how you went about finding partners and other successful people for these household projects after you reached a certain point where you couldn't rely on the banks? Thanks and keep up the good work. Well, Jack, great question. For me, partnership came down to systems and leverage. Anything that you have to do more than once, systematize it. People don't think this way. People can spend doing a craft their entire life and never change or do anything different from what it is. And yet one of the things that I learned that's valuable is anytime you repeat yourself and you have in the foreseeable future that same pattern of going to be repeating yourself, systematize. It's like I wrote my very first book on real estate, the one that you can download here below this page because I had... I was helping people invest like crazy and they kept asking the same questions over and over again. And it got to a point where I had heard that adage, the only dumb question is the question not asked. And I turned that into, I'm a dumb idiot because I haven't written a book that just does all the work for me and tells you the answer to all these questions you're going to have. And that's why I wrote my first book. I said, here's who I am. Here's my philosophy. Here's my game plan. Before you ask me questions, read my book. Today we have technology like YouTube. and. Rather than saying go spend hours reading a book, I can shoot a five minute video and also help you that way. But this is the same thing, it's leverage. If you comment below and say, Chris, I wanna be your partner, let's, let me put the money up, you bring the deals, let's make magic happen. There are times when you're gonna have questions. I've got a system to answer your questions. Sometimes it'll be me directly, and sometimes it's gonna be things like, hey, I gave you resources. Click that link, watch that video, and then let's have a follow up. What am I doing? Same time. So, so Jack, what I'm really sharing with you here is that when you see patterns emerge in real estate, one of the most important things to do is set up a system. I have a system that acquires deals, looks at thousands of them and finds the handful of the best ones for me. Mortgages, I'm always gonna be in that game. So I bought a mortgage brokerage. Property management, built property management company. Anything that you need, you wanna have it systematized. When someone comes and partner with me, I always know that I need an LLC. We gotta have something owning the real estate and, and an LLC is your limited liability company. Uh, maybe we need to do a video on that one. That's important is how do you hold your properties and entities and how do you set up an LLC? Um, I do that all in house. I set it up. I've got them all legally written, protected. And, and um, so I guess what I would share, Jack, is systematize, systematize, systematize. For me, that's way more important than location, location, location. In the end, real estate is really just a widget for me. And the real business is people and money and attitudes and knowledge. And real estate is really just a byproduct of what we trade and play in for what it is that we're really doing. Last question of the day, Derek, could you explain using an LLC to mitigate your liability as an investor? <laughs> okay, that's really funny. Uh, Nate, don't shoot the video, I'm doing it right now. Um, uh, Limitless Liability Corporation, all right. Every state has their own regulations on what good corporations are. You got SP sole proprietorships, um, you can create S-corps, 
What we're talking about here is real estate. All lawyers across the board agree that an LLC is one of the best ways to hold your real estate. I'm not going to get into the to the explanation of why, but let me share with you how it how it um, produces safety for you. It's a company, and if someone ever have, has problems with you and has beef with you, instead of attacking you personally, let them attack the problem. If the asset's the problem, let them attack the asset. An LLC tries to create protection with the corporate veil between your personal life and your business life, saying business, let it stay business. Personal, let it stay personal. And so when I set up an LLC, the one thing to remember is that your LLC is only as good as how much assets you put into it. Imagine that you owned a imagine that you own Facebook. Yeah, that's a big smile, right? And you put Facebook in your LLC. And then you also bought a property, a tiny little hundred thousand dollar townhome. Well, both are sitting in there. All of a sudden, person in the townhome comes crashing down the stairs, breaks an arm and a leg and their neck, and they're barely hanging on for dear life, and they're angry and they say, blasted person with this real estate, I tripped because you have too much slope on your stairs or it was raining outside or I'm an idiot but I can't admit that and I fell and I want to sue you. Well, guess what is also subject and liable in this lawsuit? Everything in my LLC which includes Facebook. So I only put a certain amount of properties in an LLC. Generally for me it's a million bucks. It's three, four, five, six homes, all things depending. And of course a different LLC for each different partnership. Um, so that, that's, that's what you, those are the essential basics that you want to know and it certainly legitimizes you as a business owner with all of the write-offs that you get. You need to do real estate just so that you can start writing off your phone and a portion of your house for office and your mileage on your car if it's leased a hundred percent of that if you're using it for business. And, um, and an LLC is a great way to just legitimize all those aspects of you running your business. Friends, really great questions today. I really appreciate that. Uh, we're going to do more of these videos so we can keep answering the incredible questions that you guys are bringing to us. We'll see you later. Thank you for joining me today on our adventure of answering your questions. Remember, I've got a three-day limitless wealth intensive coming up, which is designed to help you structure a 10-year game plan of becoming financially free in real estate. And you know what? It's coming up soon. So click the link below, get some more information on it, and let's you and I get face to face and have an opportunity to meet and start training in real estate and then doing real estate.